guys welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new my name is Judy and this is Atoa he's my fiance and um. today we're gonna be doing sorry I like cut him off I, let, I didn't let him say hi but he says hi so today we're gonna be doing our second video on a message from God um it's Saturday and we didn't film it on Sunday or Wednesday, but we just wanted to make sure you we got this word out there for you guys because it's powerful It's amazing and It's been shifting my perspective and I wanted to make sure That we got this message out for you guys. So Sunday's word was Ultimately making sure that you understand the amount of power you have and the power the amount of power you have that you that you can control a situation in a sense. Hear me out really quickly. So ultimately the only control and power you have on your life is the amount of energy you put towards the enemy. The ultimate sense of just knowing that if you are a faith believer, if you believe in God, if you believe in, you know, if you believe in God, you know that in his story, no matter what, you ultimately win. So no matter what circumstances you are, no matter what you're going through in that moment, his promises for you will always be there. And this kind of mixes into Wednesday service. A lot of his service is kind of like, connect okay so the power that you ultimately have as a believer is that <clears throat> you understand that god's vision for you and god's story for you you will ultimately win so taking that power that you give to the enemy taking it away you're already winning a little bit more. Your your sense of peace, your sense of joy will not be taken away. And people need to realize that your circumstances do not change. Your circumstances will not change. What changes is your mindset. So if you look at things a certain way, if you change your perspective on what you're looking at, you will be happier. You will understand that you are going through something that you are not happy with but you're going through it because at the end of it you're going to be stronger you're going to be brighter you're going to be exactly where you're meant to be and that's not to say that you're going to you're not going to make mistakes because you know there's a lot of things that we've done in our lives that God obviously did not want us to do them you know do you want to give examples um, as far as things that God didn't want you to do them, but they led you to learning personally? something. Yeah. Man. It's crazy because he gives us, <laughs> so God, Heavenly Father, um, whichever name that you want to give to him, he gives us free will to do things. Uh, but ultimately it's like we're part of this this uh this process this system that's always moving towards his glory basically you know what i mean that's not to say that you don't have to try like i feel like that's one of the main messages that um our pastor tells us when we're there you know and so i mean an example like when you look at it like that like you just said changing your perspective like right now changing the perspective is like no matter what we're doing, you know, like, uh, he ultimately wins. Now, whether you're a part of the victory or you're a part of the loss on the other side, you know what I mean? That's up to you, whether you want to try for God or not. But, um, it's so crazy because it shows the patience of God, because even though, like you said, you're looking for examples of us acting out or acting out of line, uh, of, from what he wants us to be doing and then that is you know making it to him and, and helping each other get to him uh 
he still gives you the opportunity to come back. That I think that says a lot. So, a personal story, I mean, I don't know. Um, <laughs> easily one of the stories, I guess, would be myself in the past uh, five or six years. So tomorrow, uh, we're starting growth track. Uh, growth tracks and that's something that that goes uh, helps you towards uh, your betterment and your your gospel knowledge your knowledge of the RWC the church that we go to and um, just helps our relationship with God and it basically is an opportunity to become a significant piece of the puzzle in that uh, aspect of, of what we're doing uh, but so anyways five to six the past five to six years i've been just i was you know up till this past a little over a year now like i was really a different person to say the least i was what my pastor would call church her i was de-churched and um so because of that i just lived a really reckless life um as far as uh uh, you know everything from drinking to just behavior that's not you know it's not of God basically and and going even as far as to you know rebel against the word when I'd meet people who were of the word and, and for it and um, through that whole lifestyle I kind of look at it like I made so much noise in my life and I pushed so many people away that I pushed them away until finally I met the person who was not going to just be pushed away by me, basically, who, um, you know, loved me past that and saw something that a greater calling that was for me. And I fought with my fiance tooth and nail um, from the beginning all, all the way until I mean, until I, you know, approached the stage a couple, a few months ago. Uh, that's something that we do at our church, you know. Um, our pastor prays for you. Uh, once you, you know, you, you take that step and decide to be someone who wants to act in, in you know, in the, with the eye singles to the glory of God. And so I, I took those steps and everything like that. Well, like, Everything in our, you know, relationship was coming around, um, mainly because I was ready to make, or, you know, I was seeing what was important in life, and she taught me how to prioritize and and, and made everything just clearer, and, and then eventually now, you know, this is like the climax, this is like the height of everything right now, like, it's just like we're, like, I don't know, a lot of times I feel like I'm walking on, like, clouds because everything is back to how I used to be because before those five to six years of my life I was a very devout Christian in a different faith um, but I was trying to live in a way that I was like all right God I do this and then you do this for me and I was trying to like barter with God and that that never really works to be honest like because he gives you what you need he doesn't give you what you want you know what I mean and a lot of people including myself can't accept <clears throat> that and they won't and um or you know they haven't yet kind of supposed to be look oh I, we like to look at it and uh because i mean if you would have met me probably a little over a year and a half to two years ago then it would be hard to believe that i would be <laughs> that i would be um where i am now you know, uh, spiritually and immensely and of course it's still a battle like it's just like you know i've just begun the battle to be honest, that's the thing is like when you're not in your spiritual rightness, you're not even in the fight. You're just allowing the world to just, you know, do what it does. And most of it is negative. And, and so, um, and it, it's really hard to have a positive energy and a positive outlook on things when you don't have the right, correct armor on. And so, just getting back to to your to your original question was 
what was it that was that yeah, have I had experience of doing something wrong and then it led <clears> me the right way I'd say yeah that five to six years seven eight years maybe now I mean I'm a little older than I think sometimes and um but if I don't act up that way if I don't lose those five to six years or if I don't you know I, I'm sure that those things that I did weren't how God he's not those weren't what was taught in the Bible you know what I mean he didn't t teach you to act like that but I feel to like, act like what just like an example of like what word because like people could you could say God didn't teach you to act like that but like what do you mean God didn't teach you to act like God what? didn't teach you to drink drug go to the club fight against his word push hurt people you know what I mean I was essentially the opposite of the person that he needed me to be he didn't teach me, he didn't want me to, you know, obviously be the person, be this like spiritual rebel that's out in this darkness, embracing a lifestyle, embracing those lifestyles of just, just absolute, just rebellion against what I was originally taught. And when he was in that stage, and I remember this conversation that we had one time, and this is just something that, you know, like ultimately God is using what he went through to and led him you know to the life that we have now and to him being to, to like where he needed to be with God but he also I remember him calling and I and I wanted to say this to someone because sometimes you know you're stuck in a rut and you think that you know that you're going in the right direction and you keep making excuses for yourself because for a long time he would make excuses for himself and I and I want to, you know, one day we'll sit down and make a video on, like, our relationship because it's, like, out of, like, it's honestly for the books. Like, it's crazy. Honestly, like, I would have never, honestly, like, if you guys hear the story, that our story, it's insane. But he, I remember him telling me one time, like, he would always make, make excuses when I'm like, dude, you can't do that. Like, that's not what it's, that's not right. That's not of God. That's not... And he would always come back to me and tell me, well, this is working out. Well, I'm fine with this. Well, you know, like, this is fine. Like, you know, like, I'm drinking, I'm still going out, but I'm still making it to work. Or I'm still having success here. Like, his, his thing was, I still, I'm still having success in the gym and I still have a job. That was his, like things like every single time he would come back to me but you have to remember him I remember him after he realized that this exact thing that I'm about to say to you guys after he realized this this is where kind of things a lot of things shifted the devil was once an angel so he would tell you so the things that he would make excuses for and if you're making excuses for yourself thinking that you know you're still uh going to make it or because like but you're still rebelling in so many things <clears throat> you're still not following the word of God like and you need to realize that you you're probably surrounded by a lot of things that are disguising themselves as good things but they're not and to get back out I, I know we went off into a tangent and maybe that was for a reason but I know that um what led him back and was what was the pastor's service was about understanding that you have to cover yourself yourself in an armor, which in and and because you're fighting a war on a constant basis. So while you're fighting that war, you're you have to surround yourself with good things like the Word of God. You have to surround yourself. Can I get? I was like, can I get my phone? And it's right. <laughs> <laughs> my phone. Um, do you have like the service? Remember when he um when we filled in? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think I emailed it to myself, but so they should still be on here. Our pastor uh kind of covered like three different things. It was three, right? It was I uh, three or four three. different things. I know it was three. So f three different things that you should do in order for you to ultimately protect yourself. And I don't want to make these videos way too long. So it's already on 16 minutes. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we got everything out. So we're going to go back into the word. But yes, one day we'll do a video on like our testimony on our relationship. Our weapons so, for warfare. Yeah. So 
ultimately in order for you to understand that like i said to like i came out and said to you guys the the devil was once an angel you know and he rebelled against god and he will disguise himself and he would tell you you know oh these things are going good and these things little things are going great in your life so you can continue to live the life that you live because you're still living um you're still living a a godly life you know and in reality you're not so <clears throat> i know that we didn't use a lot of like terminology of what was the pastor used for us but because ultimately the the topic of of these um of the sermon for for sunday for example it was on the war within the, uh, the, the, oh, go the ahead. war. This the the past Sunday he used a lot of the references from the war in heaven that actually took place between the devils or uh, Satan's rebellion against the plan of God. And see, see how you see how that, that connects. That's why we said we we said that story because that all really connected. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I I mean at first it didn't make sense to me, but yes, all <laughs> that connected. If you guys can really think about it, because you know he ultimately thought that he was living a a life that was going to he was okay, you know. But I would always tell him, and I would always like you know tell him that it's not cool, that's not okay, that's not you know that's not the way of living. And that's here, a, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say that's a parallel to that. It's like, you know, we just brought that up, his rebellion against against God. It's so interesting because when he, we say rebellion, but what actually, how it actually describes it is that, um, well, there's different ways that it's described and interpreted, but it's understood that there was, you know, there was plans brought to God and God um, had it one way and Jesus and, and, and then Satan came and he was like, everything you know i want to do it like this and i'll reap the and i'll reap the the praise for it and then jesus brought his plan to god and said you know let us carry out your plan and you have all the praise um to speaking to god and then when god went with jesus's plan then that's when satan decided to rebel against everyone and see so the thing was he has his own plan, his own way. I'm going to do it my way, and then I'll receive the praise for it. You know, that's how a lot of us think. We think, I'll do it my way, receive the praise, and then you'll see God, and you'll be proud of me, and I'll make it back to you anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not It's not like that. Like, he's like, God has a plan, and you need to, we need to find our way into it, and then, you know, work towards his plan and work towards him. And, and then and, and everything else, like, you know, from 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 services that we've had before and, and messages that we've had before, everything else, the, everything that you ever wanted just ends up falling in behind all of that. You know what I mean? Like They, they just say that all the, everything that you ever wanted just is just add ons, It's just bonuses for for the plan of for forwarding the plan of God, you know, and that's what happens is we get so focused on the bonuses and the things of the world that we we ignore the progression of God and, and the word of God. So if you can reverse this worldly view of the importance of things in your life and put God in front of everything, then, you know, as long as number one is in place, everything else, gonna, that's all you got. Everything else is going to fall into place. Your view, your vision, and everything that you need and want is going to fall. Your plan, your story, your your promises from God. That's another thing. Your promises from God don't go away. If you have a vision, if you have something that comes to you, there's so much that I envision and I always, I don't follow through. Honestly, I don't follow through. And that's one thing that I'm working on to be obedient. And I'm going to share a quick video next time, just me talking about what I'm doing that's been helping me a lot. And it like connects with God. So I'm going to share that with you in another video just because I want to just intimately do that by myself because it's something that I'm working on. And obviously I've shared it with him, but like I just want to get my words properly. Like to, I feel like this is going to be another sense of, this is connecting affirmation and God like completely together. Um, but <clears throat> always remember that the promises of God we're just going to leave it here. The promises of God do not leave. Like 
his, like no matter how long it takes you to get there like i'm sure that the vision he had for himself back when he was a devout um i'm sorry i'm like i, I forgot to talk about this so really quickly i wanted to share with you guys the three ways or uh, the three are three weapons of welfare to make sure you battle through um with what the devil is you know to trying to challenge you yeah. but you're always going to overcome anything that you are hit with so um I'm going to link our app down below so you guys can see it. I don't know if it's going to. Let's see. So with our app, we're able to kind of, um, not kind of, we, we are, there's questions and answers and you're able to fill in as the pastor is speaking. It's like a way for you to take notes as opposed to you like writing every single word he says. You're just kind of filling in the answers so that you know that you're paying attention, but you are still able to just get the word out so um our weapons are welfare our weapons of welfare warfare, warfare. i always <laughs> warfare <laughs> our weapons of warfare um the name of jesus so there just like the song says there's power in the name of jesus so one thing he taught us is that if you lose you're angry you don't know what to say just say Jesus. Like literally, instead of swearing, instead of saying, instead of trying to just fill your mind with bad thoughts or something like that, just say Jesus. Literally. And it's going to get through through the day. My mom, I've been hearing her a lot lately. When Eli does something, she's like, Jesus. I would say, Jesus. <laughs> I would say, uh, yeah. And I, and I would even, I would even go as far as to say it would be like, be sure to also alter your, you know, you don't necessarily want to use it in anger. You know what I mean? Like, like Judy saying, like use it to alter. That's a good one. Yep. More, use more it to so, alter your uh, thought. Right. And, and more so say it in a way of submission, like giving up your problems to Jesus, like asking him for help because he is always going to help him as long as you call on him. But just like, try not to be like, you know, yelling that like, instead of a swear yelling his name, just be like, don't asking, use his name in vain. Yeah, exactly. Using his name, use his name as a, as you know as as the power that it has because there's endless power in that name. So number two is the word of God. Make sure you're you know studying his word. I know it's hard for me. It's hard for me to fully sit there and read the Bible. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know how to connect things. I don't know the stories. I I won't pretend to and one day maybe I will learn them all but <clears throat> my way of learning is on the holy holy bible app there's plans and there's plans for you to follow and it ultimately guides you right now the one that I'm doing I keep wanting to go through my phone um but I'm using my phone so I am going through one right now if you guys follow me on it the holy bible app I'm gonna leave my link down below again for that you guys can be friends with me and you guys can see like the plans that I'm following and you're able to either join those plans or you're able to um, just start your own plans. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of plans and there's different ways to break down the, the, the word of God. So there's power in the word of God for you. You know, if you need clarity, go to the word. It'll give you the clarity that you need for yourself because Every answer you're looking for is in there. Whenever you are stuck on making the decision, there's a there's a word in there for you to be able to get clarity to know what is the right thing for you to do. Do you have anything to say to that? No, I, okay. I say I say okay. that you nailed it. <clears throat> and the third one is the power of the cross. This one's a little hard for me to explain. Do you think you can explain it a little bit? Uh, yeah, I, can, I mean, I can put it in simple terms. Basically, s simply put, um, just like there's power in the name, you know, part of that is that there's power, uh, you know, the, the power of the cross, power of the sacrifice is how you can look at it. It's because, mm -hmm. because, you know, 
Jesus put himself on that cross and allowed himself to be crucified for our sins. And so <clears throat> a girl a long time ago got in trouble in class, like at, in the in the, my old faith that I was in. And we were in class and she asked, she was like, well, she was like, uh, if Jesus already paid for all of, our, all of our sins, then does it matter if we do anything wrong? Because the sins have been paid for. And um, I didn't understand why the teacher became, you know, upset kind of at her. But now I understand why she, the teacher got upset. But I don't think that it was, I don't, I don't guess I agree with how it was handled. Um, I think all that she had to be told was that the sins were paid for and the victory is there. You know, the victory has been won. But as I said, dictates which side of the victory you're on is you know, how you act while we're here, like wh whether you're trying or what effort you're putting forth, if you're earnestly trying to get back to Heavenly Father, or if you're, you know, then you're going to make it back. If not, then if you're, you know, just blatantly being of the world and, and with, uh, with, I think the, the main thing is that every, Every heart and soul has to be offered the uh, the opportunity to come to Christ. That's something that I believe. And if you're offered that, which most people will be, um, and you don't take in and continue to be of the world, then it's going to be hard a hard case to make. You know, once you get there, um, as far as as far as you know, stating your case for God and, and, and whether or not you've made yourself and proved yourself worthy of that sacrifice. That is basically the whole point of, you know, that weapon that he gave you, you know, the sacrifice, the power of it. As long as you are wholeheartedly part of, you know, on God's side, then he's wholeheartedly on your side and there's no one else that you need be on your side if God's on your side so ultimately know that in the end no matter what in God's written story you win you win no matter what you're going through right now no matter what you think you will surpass this this will be your testimony this will lead you to the cross this is a part of your journey and he there's a purpose within everything. So believe it, embrace it, and trust it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that is all. I know this video is a little bit long, longer than I expected, and longer than the last one, but we just had a word for you guys, and I hope that it ultimately, you know, shifted anything in your mind. And if you're interested in listening to the service, because we do have an app for my church. It's called RWC, like, ultimately. <clears throat> our church is called RWC. And our pastor's name is Eli, Pastor Eli Serrano. His, um, what's it called? Our, our app will be listed down below so you guys can listen to our services if you're interested. He's very just real like you will understand him and it's like people terms like you're literally able to understand the bible just like if i'm talking to you as a friend and it's really hard for you it's really easy for you to relate it's really easy for you to relate with and you're able to just you know push forward with god so Again, the app will be listed down below. Make sure you click on it, download it. It's good for Android and Apple, and it's free. Everything is free. You're able to listen to all the services. My aunt from North Carolina listens to our services. She's actually caught up with everything. She's excited for this service that's <laughs> coming up. So, um, yeah. So, everything will be listed down below. I hope this shifted your thoughts and your perspective on things. I hope that this blessed you in whichever way it was supposed to. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. <laughs>
<laughs> subscribe is here. Subscribe is here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys on my next video.